welcome to Culinary Sexploration. I'm Owen. You've seen one, you've seen them all, but not this one. Today, we'll be making Grandmammy's special biscuit cinnamon rolls. You will need two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of pink salt, only the pinkest will do. Uh, half a teaspoon of cream of tartare, half a cup of butter or shortening, and two-thirds cup of milk. This is from almonds. You need something to mix that stuff together with. You need something to cut the butter in. You can either use a pastry cutter if you're an OG, or if you're not, you can, have, you can use a fork. And uh, parchment paper to roll out the dough on. If you have a big cutting board or granite tabletops that you're comfortable getting flour all over, then that works too. The first step is to mix all of your dry ingredients together. So, add them all to a large mixing bowl. Como este, although I don't think that's real Spanish. I always say it, but then my girlfriend gets mad at me because it's not real. Don't put the milk in yet, that's not a dry ingredient. Half a stick of butter, or half a, half a cup of butter, and make sure it's room temperature. It doesn't work if it's, uh, well, I also didn't mix the ingredients yet. Our one take wonder isn't going very well, but we're going to, you know, the show must go on. So you should have mixed your dry ingredients together before you added the butter, but it's not that important. Let's just, we'll just do it now and then cut it. Fuck it, we're doing it live. So you want to cut in the butter like this with your thing or with your fork until the mixture resembles uh, coarse breadcrumbs. So every time you do this, the chunks get smaller, and uh, I'll see you when my mixture looks right. All right, so this is what it should look like. See how there's chunks in here? Oh, they're hard to see. Maybe I can reach in and pick one up. See that guy? That's just a piece of butter covered in flour. And there should be tons of those in there when you're done. And it's important not to get them too small, because if they're too small, then they won't make delicious flaky layers that, you know, make biscuits and biscuits in a roll so good. Does it, uh, does it look like I'm wearing a, a dojo thing? After you finish mixing your dry ingredients in butter, don't forget to preheat the oven like I did. We're going for a cool 450 degrees on this one. Mm, can't wait. Next step, add your milk. And mix it. Mm. Shit, doesn't that look good? Fuck. want to stir until the dough just clings together. It's going to look something like this. Once you get to that point, it's time to lay out your parchment paper. I'm going to take mine to the table. Again, you don't have to use parchment paper. Uh, you can also use your marble countertop or your big cutting board. I prefer a big cutting board because it makes me feel like an OG, but that's just me. So, it's, it's important to make sure you tape down the parchment paper thoroughly because if it comes up, it can really fuck up your dough and it'll get all sticky and it's just messed up. It's better if you have a cutting board, but since I don't, uh, then parchment paper will do the job. So, next, you're going to want to get some flour and put it on your surface like that. And there's no reason to be shy with your flour at all. So, I mean, I guess unless you're like really hard from, you know, poor and can't afford flour, in which case, please be as conservative as you feel is important. <laughs> uh, but in my case, it's not a big deal. So, 
Now you're going to want to take your dough and with your floury hands you make it into a ball. And this is when we're going to move on to the kneading step. Okay. So just get your hands nice and floury. Maybe put some flour on there. And then you take your dough, which is just clinging together, and you make it into a ball. And there's not a science to it. Just get your hands in there. Squeeze it together. And uh, it's going to be messy. Your hands will get sticky. That's okay. Just keep... Keep going. And once you have the ball, roughly, transfer it to your flour. Okay. So, once you got your, your dough on the surface like this, you just have to start to knead it. And kneading is just literally folding in half over and over. It's easy. You want to knead this dough uh, 10 to 12 times. I'm going to go for 10. Because over kneading, Again, it's similar to uh, over, over cutting the butter in that this is what creates the layers. And if you make too many layers, then they're just indistinguishable from one another. All right, and after you've kneaded your dough, it's time to roll it out. So that make sure your surface is well floured. Make sure there's some flour on top of your uh, dough. And get your favorite rolling pin. And get started. Again, it's not hard guys. It's not rocket science. Just roll out the dough. Long, smooth strokes. Just like Jeff Bridges said in his uh, most famous role as Big Z in Surf's Up. Oh, that's right. All nigga radio. All motherfucking day. The next three days. Looking for a relatively uniform eighth, eighth of an inch or so thickness on your dough, and also a relatively rectangular shape, because keep in mind that what your goal is, is to roll it up, either uh, horizontally or lengthwise. And, uh, yeah. Alright, here comes the part of the recipe that can't be explained with words. It's something you have to feel inside you. It comes from the heart. Uh, and it involves butter, sugar, and cinnamon. And it's what makes uh, this different from just biscuits. An important step you might be ignorant of is buttering very thoroughly the inside of your uh, cinnamon rolls. Whether or not you're using biscuit dough. Because, well, butter makes everything taste better. Was really, Paula Dean had it right. She was racist, which was not right. Not right. But she was right about butter. And you really can't use too much. I'm on, you know, I'm on about a third of the stick here. On there right now, I'll probably end up using more. And uh, that I can't believe it's. Not, let me just get this straight right now. A lot of people think that I can't believe it's not butter. You know those butter substitutes will work for any kind of cooking or for your baking needs, and they won't. It's not butter. I can believe it. Again, this is an affair of the heart. I can't explain how much you should use. You have to feel it out. It actually is very similar to a philosophy developed in the 1840s by a, uh, a well-known and well-reputed school of uh, poets called the Black Mountain Poets. If you need a number, half a stick of butter. All right, next you want to come on with the uh, sugar. Now, there are many methods for applying the sugar. I haven't really thought through which one I'm going to use. So, I've decided to go with the bigger than average spoon method for applying uh, my sugar. And again, it's an affair of the heart. 
I mentioned composition by field, and what I meant by that is that you let the experience itself dictate how, dictate how the experience will proceed. I don't, all I know is where I'm going to start. Where I'm going to finish is determined by the events themselves. And learning to listen to events like that, learning to, to appreciate the music of a spoon sliding across sugar on top of a layer of butter, on top of a layer of biscuit dough, and understand that beautiful music, it takes a lifetime. Unless, of course, you have your sexploration captain, Owen, with you. In which case, you can learn by example. And finally, where the cinnamon roll gets its name, cinnamon. So you've got to listen to the cinnamon as you pour it. Can you hear it? It's saying, that was too much just now. Put a little bit less. No, no. A little bit more over here. Oh, God, Owen, please, more. I need it. I need you to pour me all over these goddamn cinnamon rolls. Mmm, I love it. That's what the cinnamon rolls are saying. The cin well, the cinnamon itself. The cinnamon rolls is saying, uh, you know, please bake me. Not yet, cinnamon roll. Shit. Mm. God, just thinking about this finished cinnamon roll product is getting me. Well, it's getting me excited. It's, it's about as far as I'll go. But oof, just look at that. It reminds me of the Rocky Mountains. And the. The Rocky Mountains? Yeah. Why? It's kind of personal. As we begin rolling the dough, it's good to take a moment to reflect on the experience you've had between you, the experience you've shared with you and this dough on your journey to the oven. You know, I can remember when all this was was, you know, ingredients in the pantry, some almond milk in the fridge. And uh, look where we are now. We made it. We made it. Me and the cinnamon roll together. We're like... I mean, I feel like this is my son. One could almost say that you started from the bottom. And now... You're here. We're here, Marty. And of course then the moment passes, and you get kind of bored. Uh, just pull through. You're almost done. Alright. And now you have completed a roll of cinnamon dough. And the next step is to first squeeze it together a little bit with some nice, gentle, loving pressure. Make sure the love is there, you can tell. And uh, then we proceed to cutting this into, uh, make sure there's no spiders on your parchment paper. There was uh, spiders on the parchment paper? Well, not anymore there isn't a spider on the parchment paper. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking killed that shit with bare hands. Damn. What an OG. <laughs> what an... And have I mentioned the cookie sheet that you should have prepared? Uh, you need this to bake your cinnamon rolls. And what we're going to do now is cut this roll into sections, like that, just so, and <clears throat> arrange them evenly on this cookie sheet so that when they expand as they cook, they don't run into each other and have some kind of disgusting cinnamon roll orgy. My son's better than that. You can try flouring your knife to make it uh, slide through better, but it won't work. 
I have yet to discover a method that will make the knife slide through easy. So just give up. If I haven't found it, trust me, you never will. Now, inevitably, some of that delicious cinnamon filling is going to come out when you're cutting these. <coughs> and the uh, correct procedure to follow <laughs> is to pick, pick that up in pinches and sprinkle it back onto the cinnamon rolls. Just going to ignore that burp? I don't know what you're talking about. There we go. Twelve beautiful little cinnamon roll babies. A couple of them are a little bit deformed, like this one and Jeremy. <coughs> that one's Jeremy? This one. This one? That one's Jeremy. Okay. It'll be particularly delicious. The deformed ones are actually, have a special flavor. Really? Yeah, and one's named Jeremy, even more so. <coughs> Alright, take your ten unbaked cinnamon rolls and place them into the oven for 10, min 10 to 12 minutes, I'm going to do 10, or until golden brown. 450 degrees, don't forget. That's right, folks. 10 minutes. Couldn't see that. It's okay. Wow. How much more did you say that needs? 50 seconds. Oh shit. Uh. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and a very important step is to put on some gloves. <laughs> and also not to get hit by the battle of the steam that's going to come jetting out of the oven when you open it. Those were two rookie mistakes I just made. They're not ready. I looked at them. So. Oh shit, man. Come look at this. Oh my god. Have you ever seen anything more beautiful? <laughs> it's really close to your face. <laughs> Observe how the butter and sugar have caramelized together to form a kind of super food flavor compound. Superior even to the Jizzy Hot compound on Cinnabon. This here is a chip made of pure new flavor compound. How does Jeremy taste? Oh god. Excuse me, I need to go um, be by myself. Hmm. Oh my. Fuck this video, I'm done. Okay, I need to go. Mm -hmm.